Hi, uh, welcome to Classes webinar today. Uh, thank you for having me here. I'm Bonchol Leo Gu from Seoul, Korea. Uh, we have uh, different kind of uh, processes uh, when we are looking at the, our uh, aging faces. The mostly prominent features coming from the, the periorbital area, but usually it just drilled down to the downside with the gravity. So uh, when we are looking at the lower mandibles and the lower face part, you can see the differences uh, with aging. But uh, usually we are well aware of the uh, aging of the face, but the hidden part, the, the most important hidden part is the neck and dorsum of the hands, which is not covered by the makeup. So uh, today we will find out how we can treat the kind of neck wrinkles uh, with the ultra former tree, with the new app, uh, <coughs> new uh, uh, hand pieces, and the new uh, tips with a different uh, precise uh, the skin depths. We have a different kind of aging neck process. So we have uh, uh, the ideal appearances with the sharp lines, with the mandible lines, and the uh, not sagging of the skin. No, and uh, no sagging of the skin and the drooling of the submental fat and submental tissues. But usually, the skin lactic comes with the first uh, differences in the uh, jaw area. And uh, uh, we can see that the more prominent uh, banding with the platysmal banding here and with the prominent uh, athletic muscles here. So uh, when the, the bone absorption happens with a low height position, and makes this kind of a drooling all the way around, uh, which is very unfavorable uh, appearance of the neck. So the, we have a different kind of volume scales for the neck, but the most important uh, causes of the neck aging, the, the aged neck looking appearance are uh, firstly with the losses of the volume, and uh, secondly, increase, increase the skin laxity. So the, with this kind of uh, the causes of neck aging, uh, we will see much, much more aged looking faces and aged looking necks and all around the body. So how we can treat them. The first three, uh, we have to see that the anatomical consideration, mostly deeper part, the cartilages and the vein and the bone, usually it is drilled down the accordingly, but it is not affecting that kind of appearance too much. But uh, if you are just making the chances in between the, uh, the deeper part of the skin, we can see the, this kind of a wrinkled structures. So we have a, a, this kind of a folded skin and decreased the, the matrix proteins like a collagens and the, like a, the chondritin surface and other kind of uh, the proteoglycans or matrix volume uh, the supplements. So uh, if you are going to uh, reverse this kind of changes, how we can treat them? Uh, we can just use the, uh, the hyperthermia lifting therapies using the high focus ultrasound, which is well known to give the focal point with the hyperthermia to make a shrinkages and to make a Newer collagen genesis and uh, the rearrangement of the collagen bundles. Uh, we will make uh, more the prominent kind of changes. The, I heard that the the vo my voice is a little bit uh, okay, small in volume. So uh, if everybody anybody uh, feels my voice is the sounds a little bit less, uh, please the type in the chatting or uh, please tell the, the uh, host to, to correct them. Okay, and the, to give this kind of a process, we are using the wound healing process. We give the co a skin coagulation at certain point, and uh, that will make a, a wound contraction using the collagen synthesis, and then we will make a collagen rearrangement, making the skin lifting effect. But uh, if you are uh, thinking about the, this kind of uh, tissue temperatures, we, we will see that the deeper part, especially uh, under the platysma muscles, 
we, we will have a different kind of approaches and we will need a precise depth approaches, which is very suitable for the hypothesis ultrasound. And there are many kinds of other the approaches. You can use the camera denervation using the buttocks, or you can use the soft tissue fillers uh, for the mostly volume augmentation or other kind of EBD energy-based devices. But the, I think that the hypocos ultrasound is the most important uh, and most widely uh, usable uh, machines or devices we can use because the other kind of uh, uh, chemical peers and the lasers, you, especially the uh, fully ovulated lasers and the laser resurfacing is quite strong weapon. But uh, they are, especially for the neck, we have a longer, longer downtime. Sometimes it is not controllable, and uh, sometimes it is a, the barrier for the uh, comfortable uh, treatment. So uh, the hypocostal sound opened a new era of the neck rejuvenation uh, because it uh, makes a certain kind of changes for the precise depth and the precise effective, effectiveness. But it has very, very short downtime compared to the other kind of methods. And the other good the additives or other kind of a combination treatment can be available with the, the hypocos ultrasound is, is very, very convenient. There can be augmentation using the dermal pillars or the chemical denervation using the botulinum toxins or other directional augmentation with the threads or the lifting in a more direct ways. And you can use all of them, but uh, today we will use the hyaluronic acid, very basic pillars, and uh, which will regenerate and reconstruct uh, the tissues at the same time. They, once again, we have a, a different kind of uh, structures down to the wrinkles. We have a thin the epidermis, and uh, we have a, the, especially the, on the uh, bottom of the, the wrinkles, we have a decreased converting surface, other kind of uh, uh, volume uh, supplements in the matrix. But hyaluronic acid is well known uh, as a regenerative drug. Uh, usually it induces TGP better signaling pathways. As a result, we can uh, see that the increase of collagen 1, 3 from our tissues and uh, collagen 4 and 7 as our inkling proteins that maintains integrity uh, with the, between the epidermis and the dermis. And the chondroitin the sulfate, heparin sulfate, proteoglycans, glycosaminoglycans, all the decreasing materials when we are aging that makes our skin contour and the textures uh, the irregular. So uh, the, there are very, very few the uh, skin boosters or the other kind of uh, the uh, mesotherapy units or other kind of drugs that can uh, increase all of them. But hyaluronic acid, as it serves, it can make a regeneration and its property is quite the remarkable. And hyaluronic acid for the reconstruction, we already all know that it offers a scaffold for newly generated collagens in the fibroblast migration and endothelial proliferation, which is very important in the uh, neoangiogenesis, that makes much more the uh, preferred collagen bundle rearrangement or new arrangement uh, for the uh, better looking dermal conditions. And this kind of uh, the hyaluronic acid and the high focus ultrasound is good for the synergistic effect because it makes a synergistic effect with an increased tender strength with a, a fibroblast, which is activated for making the newer, healthier uh, the collagen bundles in the wound healing process that is provoked by the high focus ultrasound. So, uh, which is very, very good consequent uh, treatment and it uh, compensate each other for the induction of the wound healing process in our ways and also additive the enforcement for the wound healing processes. So my treatment algorithm for the neck wrinkle is, uh, the, on, uh, is shown in the uh, <clears throat> picture. The first thing is if 
the patient lost uh, the fat or volume on the neck because uh, usually if the fat loss is coming, uh, we have uh, the consequence skin sagging, but not always. It depends on the patient age and the patient lifestyle and other kind of habits all around. So if the skin sagging is the combined, usually skin sagging makes the, the uh, superficial the looking a little bit much more rougher and uh, uh, irregular. So usually supraprotismal, the shallow depth tightening is very, very necessary. And infraprotismal augmentation using uh, the other kind of fillers or the much more dispersing, the volume augmentation is also important. Uh, usually we use a lot of uh, the augmenting uh, the uh, medical devices or other kind of materials uh, which the compensate the fat loss. But if there is no skin sagging with just the fat loss, uh, usually in the young age or younger age patients, usually the skin sagging, if it's not, usually the, the, if the diet control is too heavy, uh, too strong and other kind of uh, uh, fat loss is coming from the inside, usually infraprotismal augmentation can be necessary. But the infraprotismal tightening is also important because the superficial sagging is not so prominent. If the infraprotismal fat loss is not observed, if the patient is very chubby, or if the patient has a, a lot of the fat tissue inside, firstly, we have to consider the fat reduction first, because the, if the fat is bulging out uh, with a low hyoid, usually the, uh, the lipolysis should be first, because uh, we cannot the, remove that with just the skin tightening or the dermal tightening. But if, it is, uh, if the patient is just slim and if there is no uh, fatty uh, tissues, the less fatty tissues, fatty tissues in the skin, uh, usually the supraprotismal tightening is also important because the, in these cases, usually the skin is folded. And if the skin is folded like this, uh, the epidermis is getting thinner and thinner and thinner. So it is just like a, if we are folding the papers over and over and over, the uh, structure is different. So uh, usually in the cases, we are going to the supraprotismal tightening and the supraprotismal augmentation, uh, which is very shallow injections or other things. Uh, that's my algorithm. So you can see that, that this kind of a thing from which volume is important, if the volume is important or if the sagging is important. So you can just uh, uh, get some help from these kind of algorithms. And we will use the, the MF2 neck treatment today uh, using the right depth in a two millimeter uh, because the, we, uh, why we are using these two millimeter skin depths for the uh, treatment is uh, usually uh, most of the epidermal and dermal uh, thickness and the, it is just upon the two millimeter or the uh, or the, including all the retreats, all the popular dermis, it is not exceeding two millimeters usually. So we have a very, very low the risk for uh, making the PIH or other kind of uh, the immediate side effects. And also we can target the supraprotismal, uh, the spaces with a very precise depth. And all of you know that if there is uh, some of the fatty tissues in between platysma and the uh, skin, uh, usually we can just uh, fold the tissues and uh, for, uh, we can measure how we choose the uh, different kind of uh, uh, treatment depths. It is not so uh, the <clears throat> difficult to choose. And usually we are treating two depths, supraplatysma and the infraplatysma. So, uh, it depends on the anatomical positions, but usually the, upon the skin thickness according to the uh, skin condition, including the other kind of affecting factors like uh, aging or something. So uh, we can just go for from the, the because it, the margins of prosthesis are insertion and uh, uh, the origins are from the clavicles and up to the mandibular line. So we can just go through this way all around. 
And you can add if there is some of the wrinkles like but usually these kind of directions, maybe we can add some of the supra-pratisma uh, treatment uh, if it is necessary. Uh, usually we have a very, very typical portrait treatment cares, like uh, if you have a side effects like a clinical signs, like a reddish color changes or a swelling, usually the waiting is just enough and uh, that kind of a very, very rare, the uh, real occurring blood vessel problems, maybe we can just keep the cold pressures, cold compressions, but usually it just decreases in hours or just a couple of days. And other kind of a serious kind of a side effect is not so uh, the frequently happening. So you can just, I think everybody will know about this kind of uh, post-treatment care protocols. So we will move on to the uh, uh, live MF2 combination treatment. So the, we will have a very, very short break and we will come back. Thank you. Okay, we have a beautiful lady here today. Uh, she is uh, struggling with the, the just unwanted neck wrinkles, the transversing from the left to the right. In the front, we have a, a big groups. Usually it comes with the, the drooling of the older skin downward. And so uh, if she is uh, the making contraction of the platysma muscle, you can see that the prominent lateral side wrinkles. So him ta anachunshotu kenchanayo kwasinda. So we will just move on to the two make a tightening for the supraplatysma, uh, the spaces with the MF2 tips here. And uh, if she has a very, very uh, moderate kind of a, a fat volume inside. So the, I think the, we can just add some of the, the additional steps for the, uh, these wrinkles, but it depends because uh, she has a different kind of uh, skin thickness here and here. So let's find out the, which can be uh, much more helpful to her skin. So we will use this a um, up two tip. You can see that the very sharp and uh, insertion point here, uh, which is uh, making the, the arrangement of the uh, coagulation spots here. And it is very good because if the, the portion, contact portion of the tip is that's wide, we can uh, check. And this one is kind of a three-dimensional deposition. So uh, if, you can, if it is too wide here, maybe sometimes we can uh, feel a little bit uncomfortable when we are making the full contact here. So uh, we will go on to this ways first. And this waist part, and secondly, and the third here, uh, covered with this area. So uh, we will make a four lines for each part, and we will move on to these things. Firstly, we will apply some gels here. We can adjust it. Usually we start from the mandibular lines and then to the uh, cementer spaces and then go to the neck, to the clavicle area. You can see the, if the patient is uh, uh, feels a little bit uncomfortable when we are treating the bony regions, sometimes we can move the skin like this to avoid the mandibular angles. 시작할게요. 괜찮으신가요? 응. The working speed is quite fast, but the, the important thing is if you are making contact not in this direction to the ground or 
to the sky where you can see that the, uh, the fluid inside is not the, uh, sufficiently covering the uh, transducer. So you can just keep it down here and you can move a little bit gently uh, the, to contact, to make a contact firmly to the da downward, to downward. And if the skin is uh, uh, getting the full down to the clavicle, sometimes if you just push down like this, so you use your the left hand, left fingers as a guide to the opposite direction. This way. So we finished the first the lines here. If you have questions, if you have any questions or comments, you, uh, please leave it, uh, leave them in the chatting windows. Uh, we can collect them, and uh, we will uh, make answers for every question and comments. And all the questions and comments will be appreciated. Usually the proximal muscle is uh, divided on the tip of the chin in a uh, little bit oblique kind of directions, but uh, usually you don't need to uh, divide a uh, treatment area uh, to the left and or to the right because uh, uh, this one is uh, covering all the uh, neck with a Adjacent to the fibrous tissues, fibrous tissues with the uh, supraplatysmal or the infraplatysmal spaces. So you can just move on to the hold the area coverage with the first uh, treatment. Which is quite fast. You can see that the, the almost half of the coverage area is already finished. If the patient's uh, the skin sagging is too prominent, maybe you can add the one or two passes more uh, to uh, make a better effect uh, for the supraplatysmal the tightening, but usually it is just necessary for the one passes for uh, the basic kind of reaction. So we will just finish with the one passes first, and then uh, check the all the ways uh, to make a, uh, after making the the expression, facial expression or the neck expression using the platysmal muscles. Okay, great. Uh, because the patient uh, skin is uh, very, very thin, usually the immediate uh, swelling from the inside can block the prominence of the wrinkles. So, uh, in this, uh, at, uh, in such of the cases, we can just ask the patient uh, to contract the platysmal muscles once again. 한번 한번 다시 한번 표정 한번 지어 보시겠어요? 목이 힘드시고 그렇게 당기지 않으셔도 되고. <웃음> I'm not asking her that, uh, to fold uh, the chin, 
pull the chin, but just did make a contraction. 이 목을 이쪽으로 끌어내린다고 생각하시고, 으아, 징그러운 거 하실 때 있잖아요. 으, 징그러울 때. 그쵸, 그쵸, 그쵸. Yes. To make a, when you see that the, some of the growth things, you can just do the expression with, u. So that's, that's enough. And you can see the whole coverage is almost done, but retro side, uh, I, I need to uh, the add one of the passes. 거기 조금만 돌려보실게요. 네. When we are approaching the, uh, the <coughs> ethician muscles, you can just divide the neck area with uh, this front and the, the rear. Uh, usually we have uh, the running kind of band is here. The using the ethician band with the ultrasound uh, treatment the, to correct them is very, very hard. So if the prominence of the ethician muscles is too hard, uh, maybe you can add some of the uh, botulinum toxin treatment or other kind of uh, uh, combination will be very, very helpful. We can just add one or two. In this area, you can see that this kind of oblique lines all the way through the mastoid. It's quite fast and easy. 반대쪽 한번 볼게요. 감사합니다. 이쪽도 제일 한 번만. 네. Okay. Yeah, come down. That's it. Yeah. 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 Uh, Non-crossing hyaluronic acid and uh, very gentle and the soft, the cross-ringed hyaluronic acid together. But because if they're using the not uh, so, um, if you're using the only the non-crossing hyaluronic acid all the way, usually it is uh, the immediate action is quite good, but longer-lasting result is, it cannot be uh, expected. So. Uh, you, you are using the augmentation a little bit uh, down under with a dispersing area with a more volumes, with a more softer the fillers. But if you are using the uh, very well low G uh, prime numbers uh, fillers on the supraproteismal band area, it's quite good for uh, making the good uh, the appearance after the treatment. So we will check the, the large groups here. We are making the down under the groups. Sometimes we have a uh, deeper groups on the uh, clavicular lines. And him, I'm gonna touch on one more time. Um, um, I'm gonna This the when we are the giving the pressure down here with the contract of the platinum muscles. Usually, it is not visible uh, when we uh, when the neck is relaxed. So, uh, we will move on to the disc retro part with a uh, lower the the infra pratisma augmentation and the uh, supra pratisma augmentation. We will use the much more the direct to the very shallow with the injection. We are using uh, three tools with a. This is one example of the non-cross-linked the honey acid, and this one is a 
one example for the very gentle, uh, very gentle the uh, soft fillers with the cross winked. And usually we sometimes we use the very small size of the insulin syringes to make a uh, the spot by spot or the the bead by bead injection. So we will move uh, prepare some of the, these fillers and we will move on to this. All right. So, the, if the patient, uh, if you just fall down, pinch a little bit, you can see this pinching is always indicating the, the grooves inside. So, it is just to, with the bezels, bezels up, uh, we can just move on to these grooves. Like this person, the this small volume of the very gentle, soft, cross-linked, the fillers to here. Usually, the fillers to the lip or the infraorbital area is just enough for the, the strengths. And it will make a very good effective effect for the regeneration for weakened dermal epidermal junctions or supra platysmal areas. Usually, the we call the papillary dermis areas or depths, like here. 괜찮으시죠? Usually, you will see that the, 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 con the continuous injection of this kind of uh, bead-like uh, uh, arrows, uh, we, it will disperse just in hours. So usually, you can just add some of the things, some of the fillers here, just underneath the epidermis. You will see how much you inject it the fillers from your bare eyes because we can see this one. And usually we don't uh, give the filler injection before we treat with a HIFU or other kind of uh, energy-based devices. And usually this kind of uh, supraplatysmal injections doesn't make the continuous bleeding. So it's a spot bleeding and the uh, uh, If you just push it down like this, it's not maintained with the, uh, the bleeding. So it is very easy to do. All you need to do is make a bezel up and give the consequent very gentle Sub epidermal injection to the group. Like this. And if you are getting too deep for these injections, sometimes you can uh, touch the platysma. And uh, if the you if you are the making some of the damaged platysma, usually it doesn't affect the effectiveness. But the patient will have a little bit more bleeding and a little bit more purpurous after the treatment. So uh, it is the it is naturally gone, and uh, usually it doesn't make any kind of uh, complications. But it is upon uh, the it effect affects the downtime. So. Uh, please be careful when you are treating the superficially. 
we are using uh, the almost the, the 0.5 uh, millimeter for the whole neck area. But I think uh, you will need a little bit more. Usually this kind of uh, the fillers will disperse completely in a couple of the days and it will be uh, degraded in three weeks to five weeks. So usually it is just not making any kind of augmentation effect at this level or at this depth. But if you are treating the uh, non-sagging non sagged uh, skins or the other the infratismal augmentation if you need it you can just add some of the other kind of uh, approaches mm. and then we will move on to the other kind of uh, injections here This one is a non crossing the hyaluronic acid, which will give the temporary augmentation for um, deeper area. You can use this direction to the lateral side of the, uh, the induced neck wrinkles or you can just keep the uh, parallel direction to the uh, neck area, but uh, the neck wrinkles. But you can just add some of the things. The, according to the parallel to the efficient muscles, you can just give the short puncture here. The infraplatismal spaces, and then I'm going to go Sorry, but we can we need to change the camera here. 저기 밑에 하나 더 있어요, 가방에. <웃음> 아니, 아니, 봉투에 있는데. 여기 있다. 감사합니다. I'm using the uh, 30 gauge very thin cannula here. So if the patient neck is quite fibrous, it is not always easy to make a penetration suitably. But the puncture site is quite fibrous here.
음. 이렇게 된. 눈으로. 괜찮아요, 괜찮아요. 이렇게. You can just use this kind of uh, moving forward and back and giving the small volume of the non-cross-linked the hyaluronic acid here. Okay. Thank you for watching the uh, lecture and the live session. So uh, from now on, we will have the question and answers. So you can just uh, type any kind of questions or comments to the uh, chat and space. We will uh, the answer the question by question. Usually the uh, wound healing process uh, is happening right after the hyper treatment. So uh, when, if you are the have the same session or same place to have a additional filler treatment, you can just after the any EVDs, any energy-based uh, devices. So 
Today we use the filler right after the hypotreatment, and you can use them. Uh, if you are asking the uh, other places can be treated with the fillers after the treatment or if it is, anytime you can just do that. And the question is, and that's the question is what is the interval if we combine filler, thread, and the ultraformer all together? Uh, usually, if you are dividing the uh, treating depths, you can use the EVD first and then injectables later, just consequently, just turn by turn. But uh, if you are have uh, the very intensive kind of treatment using a lot of causing a lot of uh, swellings, maybe you can uh, uh, have some gap in between the treatment, uh, even just as at the small number of the hours. So uh, I recommend if you want to uh, give it them as a same on the same day, maybe you can just add it uh, with the uh, one or two hours intervals. But it depends. So you can just usually you can just go it just turn by turn. And next question is. Uh, is it necessary to apply anesthesia with MF2 or not? And also, is it okay to do the pulses over the trachea? Uh, usually, MF2 is not the reachable to the trachea, so you don't need to worry about that. If you push hard to hard to the DF, maybe you can affect them, but with the pressure, but not by the high force. So you don't know. You don't need to worry about that. And Usually, MF2 give the very uh, just a tingling and uh, some of the sharp kind of characters to the treatment uh, to the skin. So, usually uh, we need very short time of the uh, anesthesia, but with just a local anesthesia with the topical creams, that's just enough. Uh, but it depends on the, how much the pain, uh, how much the patient can handle the pain. So. And next question is, can the treatment be done on the thyroid area? If the patient is very skinny and very, very, very the uh, fat the skin, uh, you need to have, first, you need to have the history taking whether uh, the patient has goit or not. But usually it cannot be uh, affect, uh, cannot, uh, usually cannot affect the uh, thyroid depths, usually it is covered with a fiber, fiber tissue. So uh, usually uh, it is not necessary to cover the thyroid from that, but uh, always the safety first, so you can uh, just to make sure the, if the patient has a thyroid problems, especially the goiters. Uh, next question is almost the, the similar. With the uh, question is, do you also treat thyroid gland with the MF2? How about other cartilages? And also, will you treat the people that had cancer or thyroid gland before? Uh, usually, I treat a lot of a thyroid uh, cancer operation, post-operation scar treatment. So. Uh, usually, it doesn't impact the kind of a depth to the thyroid, but uh, if the patient has uh, the, some of the problems after the, the operation, after the if the active scar, uh, if the active uh, thyroid cancer, the treatment, uh, the cosmetic treatment is not a matter. You, you need to uh, treat the cancer first. But if the patient has a cancer history, and if the patient has a the scar after the uh, surgeries, Maybe you can check the scar area first, and uh, if it is hyperactive, if it is hypertrophic, you can just avoid the scar area. But the other area is quite okay. And uh, the next question is for the neck. Uh, don't you need any design before the treatment? Usually, we need to cover all the platysmal areas, so we don't need to uh, make a designs or something. But if the patient has a the, the neck wrinkles, the super, uh, soft, uh, in specified areas, when the she or he has a contraction of the platysmal muscle and a very, <coughs> sorry, prominent kind of a wrinkles, maybe you can just uh, target them with the markings. So maybe you can add some of the markings, but usually we need uh, the very specific designs. You can just cover all the platysmal area. 
And next question is, um, can you give the lipolytic injections and HIFU in the same session? Very interesting question because nobody knows. Usually, the, uh, almost all of the lipolytic solutions using the uh, inflammatory processes will cause inflammation after the treatment or after the injection. So, when the hypertreatment is quite enormous and uh, very strong, maybe the patient's downtime can be longer. But it is uh, still injectable, so if you want to combine uh, at the same time, at the same day, maybe you can add some of them, but uh, you can do it. It is not contraindication, but uh, you, you need to take care of the, the patient with the, whether it, it happens with the the unwanted swelling more and unwanted kind of downtime longer. Uh, I think it, the aftercare will be very important for that. Uh, next question is what like our filler injection after? Soft filler like a skin booster or what? Usually I use the very small G prime number the soft fillers like uh, for example Leftilen uh, the kiss or other kind of very soft fillers, or when you using uh, when you usually use for the periorbital areas or the the lips, it is just enough. Uh, for the non cross linked uh, the hyaluronic acid, we can use mix. We can uh, use both of them mixed together for the all the depths together, or we can just divide them in the superficial area and the deeper area. So the first thing is it really just disperse away and you will just disperse, not the making the direct correction of the wrinkles. So it will make a much more booster-like effect, but usually we don't, I don't use the skin boosters the, for the all the neck wrinkle area. Maybe you can use, maybe you can uh, the use as additive for the superficial irregularity, maybe you can use the different kind of injection techniques, but uh, injection or the permeation enhancement techniques, but usually uh, we just use supratismal the augmentation or the correction. Hmm. The next question is, how do we identify the double chin with adipose tissue compared to the double chin due to the laxity of the skin? Very important question because we don't need, uh, we don't have, all of us uh, don't have the ultrasound in the way of high resolution, we don't have. So uh, usually the, if the patient's BMI is quite the overweight or the higher, maybe you can the, expect the fat tissue inside the volume will be just uh, more than the uh, slender people. But uh, that's the assumption. So. You can just pinch up them when the patient has not like this spine position, but if you're the, uh, with a neck extension, if the pinch with uh, some of the, your fingers or other the pinching scales, usually it, it is very, very different. If you are pinching in a very uh, surfaces, uh, usually the skin is well Stretch it down like this, uh, it is a sagging of the skin. But if you pinch deeper, the fatty tissues is deep, uh, the, is pinches like a hump. But if the sag the skin, it is just a skin laxity induced the, the drooling, uh, you can just pinch the skin, stretch it all over around. So it is very easy, but you don't uh, have the discrimination, discrimination when you have a supine position of the patient. You need to relax down with the, the lie down on the bed and uh, we can expect, uh, extend the neck uh, through the way, all the way, and uh, you can just pinch them. It's very easy to do. And next question is, could you please send or show your treatment scheme for the neck lines once again? Can you show the pictures both? The scheme algorithm scheme, I think it is. Yep. Yeah. 
Maybe you are the, talking about this scheme or the algorithms. You can capture or whatever. So the, once again, with the infraplatysmal fat loss, if there is, there it is or not, and uh, if the skin sagging combined or not, and if the patient is uh, chubby or not, is quite important, the dividing the points. The next question is, uh, the, can we combine the four dapses together in one session? And how many shots is recommended to use for the full face and the neck? Usually, uh, if the patient is very, very um, old patient and uh, the little bit overweight and the fat that can all together, maybe we can use all of the dapses together, but it is very rare because a uh, when the, those kind of cases, usually the treating the mandibular lines and the, the, the submental area covers usually the, the origin of the, uh, the platysmal area here on the mandibular lines partially. And the, for the neck areas, we, it is very rare to use all of the 4.5 millimeter skin depths or the treatment because of the anatomical the, the positions. But uh, usually we use the math muscle extension here for the 4.5, but to the neck area, with the, uh, starting with the ascension muscles to the clavicles, usually we just use a, a MF2 mostly, and sometimes three millimeters, but it's very limited. Next question, I think it is the last question of today, and uh, the question is, uh, will uh, ultrasound and injectable treatment promise longer lasting result versus high prolong? Yeah, definitely, because the, I explained the, why the hyaluronic acid is important for the neck area, because neck is, has very thin skin, and the thinner changes skin with the folding and other kind of changes. So, uh, if you are using the only ultra focus the sound, you will need multiple sessions, and sometimes you will need the dynamic wrinkle combined conditions. It is not always satisfactory for the uh, single treatment modality. So, usually we use a lot of things. With the, sometimes we use the PDO threads. Sometimes we use the other kind of uh, injectables like. Uh, other injectables like a PDLA or other collagen boosters. But hyaluronic acid is very intuitive and uh, it is very good to use and very uh, controllable uh, from our the hands. So I prefer for the neck and the dorsum of the hands, but the, the usually, yeah, it lasts longer than the ultra focus down uh, treatment uh, only. And also, the combination treatment, it exceeds the, the maintenance when the hyaluronic acid injection only. So it's very obvious. Uh, we have uh, some, the several questions more, the listed. Uh, the question is, if we have the fat in the subcutaneous fat layer in the neck, can we start with the uh, six millimeter? Mm. Personally, I didn't use the six millimeter on the neck ever, but the, if the patient is very, very heavy and very, very chubby uh, with a lot of uh, the endocrinologic problems, maybe you can use, but uh, be careful when you are treating uh, with uh, enough space can be the secured when you're treating the hypo. Uh, it's very important when you are treating lower part of the neck, especially. And the next question is, how long after the filler can hypo be made? Well, usually these uh, filler injections last only uh, three uh, weeks. Yeah, usually the, the kind of logic prime number of fillers, it doesn't last longer. So uh, usually you can just add the normal the, uh, treatment intervals with hypo more than three weeks. I think it's just enough. Next question is, uh, what kind of treatment would you use to do the infraplatysmal tightening? 
Uh, yeah, very important question. Uh, usually, we use the high-focus ultrasound a little bit deeper. I mentioned the three millimeters, but the, uh, if you can add some of the, the radio frequency, maybe you can use, or other kind of a, the uh, treatment uh, with the, uh, how can I say that? The bulk heating of the, by the long pulse lasers, maybe you can use. Next question is, and if we don't have fatty tissue on our chin, can we start straight with 4.5? Uh, personally, I don't recommend it because if you are using the 4.5, the not on the mandibles and then not up, upon the, the hyoid bone, maybe you can try very small areas with the uh, drooling uh, when the hyoid bone is uh, lower. But the, it's very limited use, so be careful. Okay, uh, thank you for all the questions and comments, and thank you for your precious time to joining this webinar. And I hope that this will help you a lot in your practice. Oh, last questions we have. Um, does the 4.5 cartridge act on the adipose tissue or the on SMAS? Not here. Uh, maybe you can use it here, and uh, for the extension of this efficient muscle here, maybe you can use. Thank you for listening, and thank you for attending. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this webinar. Thank you. <laughs>